Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. It is difficult to imagine pro basketball in the late 90s without thinking of Lorenzen Wright. Lorenzen was a favorite son of the city of Memphis, a local basketball star who went on to play in the NBA for 13 years. But his life was cut short when he was found dead in a field in July of 2010, just one year after he retired from pro sports. Lorenzen had been fatally shot several times and his body had decomposed due to being out in the elements for several days. Who killed him, however, remained a mystery and left the city of Memphis on edge. Lorenzen was only 34 years old. The case went unsolved for seven years until Lorenzen's ex-wife, Shara Wright, and a deacon at her church, Billy Ray Turner, were arrested. It was shocking. In July of 2019, Shara pleaded guilty to facilitation to commit first-degree murder and facilitation to commit attempted first-degree murder. She was sentenced to 30 years in prison and just recently was denied parole in May of 2022. Her next parole hearing is in 2027. Almost 12 years after Lorenzen's murder, Billy Ray Turner was convicted of first-degree murder in March of 2022. He is serving life in prison. Let's take a look back at the case that shook Memphis, the NBA, and fans around the world. When NBA star Lorenzen Wright's life was cut down in a hail of gunfire. Hello? He left behind not just his devoted family, childhood friends, and rabid fans. The Hoops hero also left a daunting mystery that would confound Memphis police for years. This death was very, very shocking and took a huge toll, especially that the fact that no one knew who did it. The history of Memphis is rich and profound. It's where the king of rock and roll once ruled and where another king died fighting for the rights of all. But Lorenzen Wright staked his claim as the city's most recent favorite son. Not as a king, but a prince of the court. Lorenzen Wright was, is a hometown hero, really. I mean, he's a, he was a beloved figure. Lorenzen's swift rise to the top was rooted in deeply humble beginnings. How long have you known him? How'd you meet? Been known him since the fourth grade. We met between our mothers. Our mothers were friends. We just never lost touch. We always stayed in contact. We just had a certain chemistry. Lorenzen was a star at the University of Memphis. Then he catapulted to the NBA as the seventh pick in the first round. Did you watch it on TV? Yeah, of course. What was going through your head? I mean, just seeing my friend get drafted and seeing his family up there, it was awesome feeling. This woman accompanied Lorenzen on his road to stardom. His wife, Shira, the daughter of one of his youth coaches. Shira was with him basically from the very beginning. Yeah, Shira was five years older than Lorenzen, but she was a beautiful young lady. The Wrights built quite the brood along the way. Six kids, in fact. Enough for a basketball team plus one. How was he as a father? Oh, my God. I'd say it's, it's the number one thing that he cared about most in this world were his kids. He always put them ahead of anything, everything he did. Lorenzen was crushed by the tragic death of a seventh child, a baby girl who fell victim to sudden infant death syndrome. The Hoop star established a scholarship in her name and got deeply involved in philanthropy. He just always gave and gave and gave. Lorenzen played for several pro teams before ending up with his beloved hometown franchise, the Memphis Grizzlies. Everywhere we went, people wanted autographs, take pictures. It was huge. How did he take all that in? He enjoyed it, he loved it, he embraced it. Uh, he never was selfish um, or anything. Anybody that wanted an autograph, he kindly gave it to him. He took pictures with anybody who asked for it. He was very humble. He had a long career, but um, very profitable as well. How much did he net over that time? According to court records, he earned $55 million over the course of, I think it was 13 years that he was in the NBA. But by the time Lorenzen Wright's hoop days hit the final buzzer, his rags to riches story and brilliant career had dimmed to a familiar cliche. Too much fame, too much fortune, much too soon. By the time he was done playing, he was broke, pretty much. I mean, he had two expensive homes that were in foreclosure. And according to Shara, they had a lot of creditors after them. He's got a lot of family and people coming at you as well, too. You know, you got this money and fame and success has you. So the problem was he was a giver. He gave to anybody who put their hand out. 
It's that dangerous two-headed monster that stalks the unsuspecting sports superstar, luring him down a path of self-destruction, money, and women. Lorenzen loved to score in more ways than one. It turned out he was a chronic cheater. Nearly a woman in every port, as they say. Shira was devastated. You really get the sense of somebody who feels betrayed, hurt, cheated on. Close friends were stunned. They were together for so long, and what they put out to, to the public and to family and friends was a pretty much good relationship. Lorenz and Wright had flamed out, broke, divorced, and now living hundreds of miles away in Atlanta, desperately missing his kids. He told childhood friend Michael Gibson he was rethinking his life. He's like, I might as well get back with my wife, you know, and just be happy. That's what he told me. He might as well just get back with her and be happy because he wasn't happy in the dating scene. Right. Georgia 911, where's your emergency? No. There are words of panic. Uh, there's some cursing on there, and you hear gunshots, as many as 10, 11 gunshots. And this is, you know, him getting murdered. Hello? Donna, I have nothing but gunshots. Hello? Hello? It feels like he, he really didn't know what was happening until that moment. Right. That's what I think. I think he had no idea. The call was picked up by a 911 dispatcher in Germantown, and they never, they never pursued it immediately. What do you mean they didn't pursue it? It's still a shooting. It's a shooting, but they didn't, they didn't know it was a shooting. They tried, to, they tried to trace the call, and they couldn't. And they just somehow just dropped the ball. They, they should have alerted Memphis. It was an astounding and reckless error, one that hurt the subsequent investigation badly. Once Memphis police were notified, they traced the call and found the body in a remote meadow. Unfortunately, it was nine days after the murder. Whoever did it had a nine-day head start. You know, if they could have got found the body in that, that night, you know, the trail's much fresher. He's been laying nine days in 100-degree heat in in Memphis and the body is just severely decayed at that point. And we'll just go wherever the investigation leads us. So we're not ruling in, we're not ruling out. What clues existed were weak. Shira told police Lorenzen left her house that night with a box of drugs and a man she didn't know. She mentioned that he was going to flip something for $115,000. There was some speculation that Lorenzen got tangled up with the local cartel. We had read some about him selling cars to some drug guys, so we just thought that was it. We were like, oh my God, what did he get involved in? But there was no direct evidence linking Lorenzen to drug dealing. Whatever the motive, police believe the former NBA star was double teamed that night. How many shooters? The autopsy reports and the police have said that there were two different shell casing types or two different calibers. <laughs> Nine days lost and not a tip or a clue that sticks. Nothing more irritating for detectives than to have to put the case on ice. That was the frustrating thing, and especially for Lorenzo's mother, Deborah. Just this agonizing question of, you know, who did this and why? And you just don't get those answers. I really need your help, people. Come on, tell us something. Then five years after her husband's murder, Shira Wright does something unexpected. She pens a salacious novel, one seemingly based on her life with Lorenzen. It's called Mr. Tell Me Anything. The character, I guess he would be the antagonist in the book, a basketball player who's, whose name in the book is Mr. Tell Me Anything, um, you know, he so closely resembles Lorenzen in that he grew up in Mississippi, came up to Memphis to play basketball, made the pros. But the novel covers so much more. It seems to tell the real life story of an unfaithful marriage, including characters like Honey Blonde and Ride or Die Chick. The theme that comes through is that of a, of a very embittered woman. Mark Parasquia is an investigative reporter for Memphis newspaper, Commercial Appeal. He met with Shira at a local restaurant to talk about her book. They're very graphic scenes. And again, she catches her husband cheating with another woman in the act of it. And the other woman, I think she calls her Miss Honey Blonde in the book. She runs into a bathroom and Shara comes and kicks the door in and, and proceeds to beat her up. Like he's whacking her on the head and all that. 
The words read like cheesy pulp fiction. His face was all adorned in bright red blood and hers in black because of the smudge mascara and tears. They were even now. She was done. His money was poisonous. In the book, Shira's character is fat shamed, beaten, and even considers suicide over repeated infidelities on the part of the NBA player she's married to. She said she struck him with keys, like had, had keys and a fist and punched him in the face and drew blood. So I asked her, I said, did this really happen? And she says, oh yeah, that happened. Now, Mark is wondering if this book of fiction is based on a true story. He changes the subject to her husband's murder. Do you have any idea who, who, who did this? Or? I don't know. Uh, I gotta ask you this, but I mean, did you have anything to do with his murder or his disappearance? I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm an author, and the police should find his killer. I'm a minister of the Lord, and I've never been in any type of trouble or anything. I, I just, I, I'm a mother, an author, and a wife. And in fact, Shira had become an associate minister at Mount Olive Church. But it's possible her brand of worship includes a certain moral flexibility when it comes to the truth. Remember her account to police that Lorenzen had a box of drugs and a friend she didn't recognize? And I never said box of drugs. You can write that because that's not true. What did you say? I just said he had a box. And they added the part about the drugs, I guess. Did you tell them the first time that he was at your house and he left it was somebody that you didn't know? I never told them who he left with because I didn't see that. And so that would be an untrue statement. There are accounts that you told the police a few weeks before this that two or three guys came up to the house looking for him and they had guns. Do you remember that? No, I don't remember. I mean, I try not to even think about things like that. She was asked directly, did you have anything to do with it? And I thought it was interesting, never once did she say no. She just kept repeating, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm an author. Yeah, and I saw that interview. I'm like, huh. When I saw that, I'm like, wow. Come on, Sarah. But here's where Shira's unflinching audacity will drop your jaw. She told me in the interview that she was working on a sequel and the sequel was going to be called The Whole Nine. And that's where I said, OK, this character in this book, Mr. Tell Me Anything, is he murdered? And she says, oh, yes, he is. And that's what the sequel is going to be about. It was difficult to discern whether Shira was just toying with Mark and even police. A sordid book and conflicting statements do not make a murderer, or at least one you can convict. In the meantime, Shira has collected on a million plus life insurance policy, and in less than a year, she has just about spent it all. Lorenzen's dad, Herb, is concerned about the children's welfare. He takes Shira to court. Prudence demands that you spend the money in accordance with what's in the best interest of the children. If you buy pizza, you don't buy a steak, or maybe you buy a hamburger. Herbert Wright tried to get a million dollars a couple of years ago. He didn't get it then. He's back for a second bite at the apple now. Shu's behavior, no doubt, suspicious. If it were a TV drama, perhaps she'd get arrested and tried. But this is real life, and so far, no one is confident that any case is provable beyond a reasonable doubt. Former NBA star Lorenzen Wright was gunned down by the rapid fire bullets of at least two weapons. The case was far from a slam dunk. Five years later, it was still steeped in mystery. Lorenzen's ex-wife, Shira, had plowed through a million-dollar-plus insurance payout, then published a novel filled with jealousy, violence, and vengeance that she claimed paralleled her own life. I said, this seems to be about you and Lorenzen, and she said, it is. She said, she told me 99.9% .9 of the book is real. A history of violence. <laughs> and yeah, it says she was beaten at times, you know, so... Somebody who clearly has, you know, some issues, uh, perhaps of, you know, revenge and uh, uh, bitterness toward this basketball guy who was Lorenzen. If one reads between the lines, a motive for murder may be gleaned from these pages. But in an interview recorded at a local restaurant, Shira insisted she wasn't feeling any heat. 
They didn't have any real suspects, if you want to quote that. So you asked the police that? Uh, I did, and they just said that, it, they said that the list was long and wide. Enter Wendy Wilson, Lorenzen's longtime personal assistant, who witnessed Shira's rage in the years leading up to the ball player's murder. If she didn't get in touch with him, it was automatically, you know, I think she began to be mistrustful. And then from that to the anger, and eventually to, if I ever caught him with anyone else, I'm gonna him up. And she said a couple times, I'll kill him, I'll kill him. Wendy actually recorded Shira's threats, played them for Lorenzen, and also gave a copy to police. I just wanted to make certain that I documented it, just in case. After Lorenzen's murder, Wendy reminded Memphis police of those rapidly relevant threats. And neighbors even reported seeing Shira burning items in the backyard of her home just after the murder. It was a blistering July. There's no doubt Shira Wright's status was now straddling the line between person of interest and full-blown suspect. Still, two more years would pass with no one in cuffs. And then it came, a break at the bottom of a lake. FBI divers searched for five days in a row without tipping off neighbors. We were told it was a diving training exercise. The covert mission proved to be more than fruitful. Authorities located the murder weapon in a lake near Walnut, Mississippi. The gun was traced back to one Billy Ray Turner, a man with an eye-raising connection to Shira Wright. He was a deacon in her church uh, where she was a minister. He also had a landscaping business and mowed her lawn. Were they intimate? Was there some affair? I mean, it doesn't seem that far-fetched to think that that played into this. Police won't say who tipped them off or how they connected the gun to Turner, but it was enough to move and move quickly. Surveillance tape from our Memphis affiliate, WMC, shows the exact moment cops nabbed Turner at a convenience store. This morning, the Shelby County Grand Jury indicted Billy R. Turner for the premeditated first-degree murder of Lorenzen Wright. The alleged killer was met with the anguished screams of Lorenzen Wright's mother in a Memphis courtroom. How could you have murdered my son? I don't understand the pain. Ms. Wright, would please be respectful of the courtroom. And guess who's next to face the judge in the wrath of a devastated parent? Shira Wright was arrested in Riverside, California, where she made her first court appearance. She was confined to a wheelchair for reasons unknown. And at this time, she way back to the state of Tennessee. Since Lorenzen's death, Shira Wright had married and divorced a police officer and was now on her third husband, a California record producer. I was seated right behind Shira Wright as she was read the charges. Ms. Wright, you've been indicted by the grand jury charge in a three-count indictment. Evil, evil, evil. Just the wicked witch of the South. Note the criminal charges. First-degree murder. First-degree murder carries one. Conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. They carry anywhere from 15 to 60 years in prison. And interestingly, criminal attempt first-degree murder. Do you understand what you charged with in this case, ma'am? Police believe Shira had tried to kill her husband several times before and had finally succeeded. Do you think police are thinking Shira and Billy Turner, both charged for both gripping a gun and shooting at him? I think they place her at the scene in the indictment. But keep in mind, court documents refer to an unindicted co-conspirator. Are you expecting charges against anyone else? Can't comment on that. Could that unindicted third party be the snitch? You can't pry that answer out of cops right now. I will say this now and probably several times. This is a pending indictment. This is an ongoing investigation. An investigation with a poignant name. So Operation Rebound was, was what we thought was the perfect title for this case. Because in basketball, when you get a rebound, that gives you a second chance. That gives you another chance to score the basket. That gives you an opportunity to win the case. All for the court, we are not guilty. Both defendants maintain their innocent and await trial behind bars. Lorenzen's childhood pal ponders the last seven years of hurt and loss, seven long years of living with an open wound, and it's still far from over. And what does justice look like for you? For me, he won't do anything because it can't bring him back. You know, I lost my friend, so I'd rather have him back than any of this.